Oh, campers, how are y'all doing? Actually, there might be people who were not in campers who have no interest in being in a camper watching this because, you know, the titles may attract different kinds of people. If you are somebody who's just come here because of the title, which I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but um, if you have, put a comment, if you don't mind, in the comments section. Obviously, where else would you put it? Um, and uh, let me know. There's a local camper person. Yes. Anyway, I've written some notes because I do go off a bit. Really? We haven't noticed. <laughs> um, and I, I might still do that, probably, to be fair. Because uh, that's how my mind works. It's just all over the shop. And I know I have a tendency to start sentence and then, oh, look at that. That's nice over there. <laughs> and not finish them. <laughs> now, what I wanted to say she forgot to say even though i've written it down uh <laughs> that I, i'll probably put a disclaimer at the start of this video like i put the start of the other video that i did on perfectionism um i'm obviously not a guru you know it, this is my experience that i'm sharing um i have got a degree in counseling and psychology so that taught me a few things but most of my learning has come from reflection being self-reflective uh analyzing doing a lot of reading and yeah just so that I can be the best person I can be so I can live the best life I can live you know that's what I'm trying for so I'm always in a position of wanting to learn something that's going to help move me forward in life so yeah that's my disclaimer I'm not some kind of expert you know there's people who are smarter than me wiser than me somewhere apparently <laughs> Um, so, you know, you might be better listen to them, not me. But anyway, just needed to say that. So anyway, why I'm moved today to do this video is because I've started meditating and I've done that for health, health reasons. As That's why you normally do it, really, isn't it, I think? Well, you know, my mental and physical health, but more physical because, as I've said before, I'm a very, I'm quite a tense person. Um, I find it very hard to relax even in my sleep I'm not relaxed because I'm grinding my teeth and I, I don't sleep well wake up a lot and and I have a lot of pain in my body because I think I'm in a state of stress and I have been probably for most of my life with periods of less stress um, but when you're in a state of stress you it's going to affect your physical health um, and my health issues are, are, well, some of my health issues are, are like muscle based pain. So I thought, right, I need to get into a meditation practice and try and stick with it because I've started meditation practices many times and not stuck with them. So I thought I need to do that to try and get my body at least to relax. So I did one today, and it's like meditation, you think, oh yeah, I'm just going to be really zen and, you know, peaceful and calm. And yeah, you can have that experience. It can feel lovely. But it also can open up a door that's been like bolted shut. <laughs> um, door to emotions, thoughts even that you've been trying to suppress and what sort of came to mind today for me was guilt and shame and what triggered that was thinking about my friend's little dog so I'm really distracted I'm sure I've got ADHD that's why I can't sit still as well um, so I was thinking about because you, you know you sit there and you meditate you can't switch off your thoughts it's I think it's impossible really there's always something going on. Uh, mindfulness meditation teaches you to just watch your thoughts, not get attached to them, rather than saying, right, you can't have any thoughts, because that that's going to lead to a lot of frustration. So I started thinking about my friend's little dog, and then that started me thinking about my own animals and other deaths and things, and I'm feeling very guilty. And guilt is a common emotion when we have a loss, death whether it's animals or people, I think. You know, I mean, I know that I could carry guilt, but I really got in touch with some pain 
and booed my eyes out. You might be able to tell, I don't know. Um, really, really booed my eyes out. And the thing is that some people might think, well, I'm never going to meditate then if that happens. But better out than in. All that emotion that's suppressed is, it uses energy. It uses energy to suppress emotions. So if you've got chronic tiredness, maybe suppressing something that needs to come out. As I've said before, holding on to emotions, I think, can create chronic health conditions. You know, whether it's rage you're holding on to or sadness, whatever. When it's repressed, it's it does affect us. We think it's not there and we're coping fine. But if you suffer from anxiety or depression or you've got health issues, then there's something else going on. And it might be purely physical. It might be that you're eating something that's aggravating you. But then are you being aggravated because your body's in a state of stress it's like i was diagnosed with ibs irritable bowel syndrome or well, it wasn't called that it was called a spastic colon <laughs> probably can't say that anymore spastic um when i was i don't know 11 or 12 i was i was still a child living at home anyway i can't remember exact age and ibs is another one of those conditions which doesn't seem to have an obvious cause you can't do a blood test that says oh you've got ibs as far as i'm aware and I think, for me, it was stress-related. My body might be extra sensitive, but I lived in a stressful environment. And I think when you're eating, because dinner's dinner table, there was always some kind of aggro. And if that's really bad for your digestion. You don't need that. <laughs> you're in a state of stress. And I think, I don't know how it works exactly, but I'm sure it can't be good for your stomach. Because the thing is, when you've got two systems, I'm not a biologist or a doctor or anything, but basically you've got the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight. It's when everything's getting ready to fight or run away, basically. It's there to protect us. So certain hormone with certain hormones associated like adrenaline and cortisol and what have you. When you're in that state, your digestion shut, you know, shuts down. But it's like your body's not concerned with digesting food because you're getting ready to fight, you know, or flee. So I think if you're in a state of stress and you're eating, it's really bad for you. Because your body's not equipped for that. And, uh, you know, I think maybe that's why I ended up with really bad stomach issues. They're not so bad now. I, I still get twinges. I mean, yesterday when I went with my friend to have his dog put to sleep, I ended up with stomach ache, and that, I think that was a stress reaction. And if you think about how many people are in a state of stress now, because originally the stress response was supposed to be a momentary thing, not prolonged. And that level, all those levels of hormones that are going on for hours, and days and weeks and months it's going to be damaging for your body it, to me it's like if you sat in a vehicle and you put your foot to the floor but you don't put it in gear it's like i imagine it's not going to be right good for your engine because the end you know your body's not doing what it, the engine's not doing what it's supposed to be doing it's not moving forward which is what it's supposed to happen when you put your foot on the accelerator so when you're doing that with your body all the time it's not going to be good and it might be stating the bleeding obvious but it's something to think about isn't it and then you've got the parasympathetic nervous system which is the hormones that's put you back to you know being in a normal state it's when your body is working on repairing itself and you know deals with digestion and all the other things that it does and those two sets so I've got a crick in my neck. Those two sets of, those two systems should work together in harmony, but they're not in harmony anymore because people are under a lot of stress. Certainly in the Western world, I was just reading something earlier, and studies have shown that people in developing countries don't have the rates of IBS that we have, and rates of IBS start to go up when countries start to become more westernised. I mean, that can be to do with food, no doubt. Um, if they're going from a, a quite a simple diet to all the shit that we end up eating 
But also I think stress is probably linked to that as well because our life is, like I said, there's a lot of stress. It's very fast paced, isn't it? Everything is, everything's on fast, which is why meditation is good because it slows everything right down. And I say meditation, some people are put off by that word meditation, sitting quietly, sitting quietly without distractions because how many distractions are there? So many. Social media, I mean, it's the biggest one, isn't it? Like I've said, I can sit on TikTok for hours, mindlessly scrolling through. I sometimes find really funny things on TikTok, though, which makes me laugh till I cry, so that's positive. But this was about... <laughs> this video's supposed to be about guilt and shame, not stress. Everything's linked, though, isn't it? Everything comes together. It's all part of the same thing. But what I was going to say about guilt and shame... Guilt and shame are not the same thing. They can feel sort of similar and they're kind of linked. But guilt is about an action. So you feel guilty about something you've done. Whereas shame is about yourself. So you feel shame about who you are as a person. And for me, a lot of guilt, and which has led me to feel shame, I think. For me, one leads to the other. One has led to the other for me. I might change my mind on that next week. I don't know, but that's how I'm feeling right now. Religion's got a lot to answer for, actually, where guilt's concerned. My mum was a Catholic, although a lapsed Catholic, to be fair, because my dad wasn't anything religious. But she, you know, she went to school in a convent in the Himalayas, interestingly, because she lived in India for the first 18 years of her life. So she had that upbringing, that guilt thing, and um, I was obviously, I'm not obviously, but I was quite a naughty child. Can't imagine that, Coral. Um, I say naughty. I was probably strong-willed, quite high-spirited. Didn't like being told what to do. I still don't. Um, <laughs> probably not a dream child, really. So I was probably told off quite a lot. I remember getting smacked quite a lot. Not battered or anything, but smacked. And um, I'm sure that's led me to, as well as things that have happened since I left home, it has made me feel very guilty and, uh, you know, sh ashamed, I guess. The thing with guilt is we can feel really bad because we've done certain things. And we can, uh, I think guilt can make us, sorry, I'm just sort of pondering this. When we have a lot of guilt and then shame, we kind of, we can punish ourselves. And we can punish ourselves. I mean, I've, I've, Sorry, sensitive information, trigger warning. I used to cut my wrists as a way of punishing myself and also as a way of changing how I felt emotionally because that felt better than how I felt emotionally. I, I've, done, I've hurt, physically hurt myself quite a lot through, you know, feeling guilty and feeling like a bad person. But we can also punish ourselves by self-sabotaging, not allowing ourselves to have happiness because, as I said in another video, if you feel like you're a bad person, you don't see why you should have good things. You know, you're more likely to punish yourself than reward yourself. But the thing is, if you feel guilty, that shows you actually care. Because truly bad people don't feel guilty because they don't give a shit. So if you take nothing from this video, take that. That Take that. I almost burst into song. I didn't because I can't think of any take that songs. Lucky you. <laughs> oh, somebody coming now. Keep talking, Carl. It's fine. Um, hello. <laughs> oh, I've lost my place now. Hell fire. Yeah, take that because you, if you feel guilty, I mean, I, I've sobbed today. Really sobbed my heart out because I, there's things I can't take back. The thing is, if you have done something to upset somebody or done something that you regret, if you try and make amends if you can. Of course when that guilt is associated with those who've died you can't can you you can't take anything back and that for me is the hardest part of it the most painful part but we do what we can with the information the knowledge the ability we have at any given time so we can look back on life and think oh i should have done this i should have done that but it's like could you have done it differently then? Could you? Did you know how? Did you have that information? 
for the most part, we don't act like twats just for the hell of it. <laughs> it's just because we don't know any better. Um, and the fact we feel a lot of guilt or remorse after the event shows that we do care. So we need to learn forgiveness, which is hard. And I'm not saying I've learned that. I, I'm, I need to work on it. I definitely need to work on it. And that's a part of a self-love thing, which should be another video. Because we do need to forgive ourselves, our discretions. I'm sure that's in a song. It might be a hymn. Forgive ourselves, our discretions. I don't know. But, you know, it's not a bad thing, is it? Forgiving yourself for things you've done, things you haven't done that you wish you had done. If you know you're not a bad person, deep down you're not a bad person, then we have to forgive ourselves forgive ourselves those trespasses and forgive those who trespass against us the lord's prayer one of the only things i remember from school i was there 11 years <laughs> um yeah I'm, I'm not getting religious please don't think i'm getting religious there's aspects of religion which i can take there's a lot of it i don't want to take so but anyway i'm not going to get all religious and preachy hopefully I might just talk a little bit. How many thousands of minutes have I gone on for? Oh, 13.52. Oh, that might just work out okay. Because um, I will be editing, obviously. Obviously, obviously. Letting feelings out. It can scare the bejesus out of us. It really can. Because it can hurt. Especially when it comes to loss. Feelings of loss. Oh, my God. They hurt like hell, don't they? But holding on to them hurts us more. You know? Long term. It's like all those emotions that I let out this morning. I could have just continued to carry that round. I suppose Pete, you can call it baggage. It is like baggage. And it wears you down, doesn't it? I was thinking of your baggage. Like you've got a you've got a spare room or you've got it doesn't have to be a spare room, just a room. <laughs> Where you've got a cupboard in it, a wardrobe, and you know in that wardrobe it's full of all sorts of shit and you think, ah, I'll do it later. I'll do it, yeah, I'm, I need sorting. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Anyway, one day you decide to do it and you open the door and things fall out and you look at it and think, oh dear. And then you start pulling things out and before you know it, it's everywhere and you think, oh my God, why did I do this? It's awful. And you want to shove it all back in. But you don't, you persevere because it's like you've put it off for long enough and by the end of it, your cupboard's nice and tidy, sorted. You're getting rid of a load of shit that you don't need to carry around anymore. And you've made space for new things. And you're really pleased. It was a difficult process. It was hard. It was stressful. But it's done now. And now you've got a wardrobe that you can put new things in. To me, that's emotional baggage. That's what it's like when you've got emotional baggage. It needs clearing out. It does you good. I mean, I've done a video on mental health and clearing clutter on my other channel. It's not quite what I'm talking about here, but it's sort of a... It sort of is. The thing is, we can have chronic illnesses. So we, we get medicines, which at best maybe reduce symptoms a little bit. I know some, there's that, some medicines like, you know, insulin will correct your insulin levels so you can live a, a normal life. And, you know, if you go without the insulin, you can fall into a diabetic coma and die so you could say that's a life-saving medicine however diabetes can be reversed through diet just so you know but you take all these medicines and lots of them don't work a great deal i've worked with people with mental and physical health issues and with the mental health they're still they've still got anxiety they're still depressed um physical health problems they're st they've still got pain they've still got this you know so these medicines which we're relying on so much and not necessarily doing us any good. And then there's the side effects. And then what are the long-term effects of these medications? And often it's just because we're repressing feelings. We need to get in touch with feelings and we need to just try and live the life that we deserve to have. Um, so you could go through a spell of feeling very emotional, letting out all sorts of emotional shit, which might go on for few few hours few days few weeks maybe or we can take medication for the rest of our lives which at best maybe staves off some of the symptoms but you know damages us damages us in other ways i might have to tick the controversial box 
in the uh, when I'm editing this video because you have to go through this a lot of tick boxes is the swearing usually uh, nudity probably not enough <laughs> controversial issues blah 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 I'm gonna have to tick that box it affects whether you can put ads on or not you see anyway <laughs> so that is my message really as a as a self-reflective person try get in touch with your feelings so i know it's not easy but they're not harming you by getting them out they harm you by keeping them in um i think like again i've been working with people and and through my own experience actually grief that's not expressed can perhaps lead to anxiety maybe that's anxiety about the lack of control we have over death maybe it's in a sort of an unconscious fear maybe losing somebody causes that i mean i went through a phase of you know there were several deaths and losses and i think i did get more anxious as a result of that you know but I keep working on it keep working on it i've said a lot in that i've said a lot and i think i might just leave it there hopefully i haven't rambled too much hopefully i've made some kind of sense hopefully i haven't started sentences and not finished them too often <laughs> hopefully i haven't fidgeted too much I'll leave it there. If there's anything you want to add, please do. Obviously, if it resonates, share that. That's great. If you've liked the video, please give me a thumbs up because that that helps. It helps. The more interaction, the more likes and views. It, it helps the video get promoted more. And, you know, if you think other people need to hear this shit, then, then you know, thumbs up and all that, you know. Right, I need to uh, get on with my website now. Keep dragging my heels. I'm really afraid of failing. That's that's at the bottom line. I'm afraid that I'm going to set it all up and it'll fail and then I'm going to feel shit. Even though it's not a failure to try. I know that, intellectually. Anyway, don't keep talking, Coral, because you can be here all day and people haven't got that time. Right, yo, that's it then. Uh, thank you for being here and listening and for being patient and bearing with me, etc. And if you've got to the end and you listen to this, awesome. Thank you. Right, bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>